Welcome back to Somerset Place. We are standing in the plantation's barnyard near the site of the wagon house, also known as the carriage house. This enormous structure was 150 feet long, which is almost the length of four school buses and double the length of the Collins family home. As its name suggests, this building housed all the wagons, carriages, and carts that both the Collinses and the enslaved community used. It first appears on the 1839 inventory as containing eight wagons, six swamp carts, three corn droppers, and 25 old plows. While the canals and ditches served as the primary means of transportation around the plantation, enslaved persons also used wagons to transport supplies to and from the fields, including communal lunches. They also used wagons known as carry logs to transport lumber to the sawmills, which Krista discussed in a previous episode linked at the end of this video. In addition, enslaved shingle makers likely used the swamp carts as they worked in the densely vegetated cypress swamps within the plantation. These enslaved people harnessed mules to pull their wagons and carts, while the Collins family kept horses. Both were housed in the stables, which we covered in a previous episode linked later in this video. The Collins family also relied on an enslaved coachman named Wellington Roberts to drive their carriage. He transported them both on and off the plantation, including along Somerset's carriage drives to and from Mackey's Ferry, around the town of Edenton, and on their many travels throughout the region. These frequent excursions meant that Wellington was often apart from his wife Muriah and their six children. However, his position also gave him an elevated social status within the enslaved community. He wore high quality, fancy clothing, and his family had their own single room dwelling. Wellington continued to store the Collins' carriage in the wagon house until it burned down on September 25th, 1854, along with the four-story barn. It's unknown if the structure was rebuilt or how many wagons were lost, but we do know that the Collins family continued to use at least one carriage. Two years later, neighbor Jane Pettigrew described it as, quote, Mr. Collins's grand carroach, which moves at the slow and dignified pace becoming large bodies. She seemed to have combined the words carriage and coach, indicating that it was quite large. Then, when Mary Collins suffered a stroke in 1860, Wellington drove her around the carriage trails once or twice a day for fresh air. With the outbreak of the Civil War shortly thereafter, the Collinses found themselves deeply indebted, especially after the death of Josiah III in 1863. As a result, Mary could no longer afford the luxury of an enslaved coachman. She sold the family carriage in May 1864 for $483.33, and hired Wellington out to the Confederate Army as a teamster for $328 a year. Meanwhile, Union soldiers appropriated some of the plantation's wagons and carts for their army, and once the war ended, Mary's son George Collins spent considerable effort trying to get them back. At the same time, Wellington resumed his duties as a family driver until his death in 1866. Subsequent owners of Somerset Place converted the original wood house into a combination stable and wagon house around the turn of the 20th century. If you'd like to learn more about that building, click the link here. Please subscribe to our channel as well and ring that bell to receive notifications about our latest uploads. We also hope you will join us for a guided tour to learn more about the enslaved community and the Collins family. Thank you.